Did it, did, did it, did. Welcome back, guys. My name's Gareth. This is Tech Check, and we are back. Back with a bang, that is, because we've just come back off holiday. You may have noticed that we've had a lack of uploads over the last couple of weeks, and that's because I needed a break with work, kids, YouTube, everything else, guys. I needed to get away with the family for a couple of weeks, and I will say, now we're back, it's been absolutely fantastic. But without further ado, I wanna say that we've got another PC build that I want to share with you guys today. In the Corsair 4000X in black, we've got a 12900K, and I can't wait to check out the P&E core performance on that uh, particular CPU. We're gonna be calling it via this H150i Elite LCD, so we can see what emojis and uh, GIFs we can actually on the screen on here. For the actual graphics card, we've got this 8 gig 3070 RTX card. Absolutely fantastic. Great to see that GPU prices are declining. Availability is more uh, out there for you guys as well. So therefore the costs have been reduced. So that's absolutely perfect. In terms of motherboard, we've got the kind of Mac daddy of all motherboards, guys. This is the Maximus Hero Z690. So absolutely brilliant motherboard a little bit ott in all honesty but the reason why we've got this 3070 is the fact that we couldn't get the 3090 that we actually wanted so we're going to be putting the 3070 in this particular build so don't be put off guys 3070 still absolutely fantastic still do really really well with the 12900k but what i would say is with the amount of money that we spent on the actual motherboard the cooler the actual cpu then the 3090 is a better pairing and at a price point than the 3070. So yeah, this actual Maximus Hero, can't wait to build with that, especially Z690, 12th gen Intel, gonna be absolutely insane. We've got 32 gigs worth of crucial uh, DDR5 memory. We've got a 980 Pro for our operating system, a two terabyte 860 Pro from Samsung SSD. We've got some lovely cable extensions from Cable Mod. And then we've got three extra ML120 RGB fans. If we've got room with this particular graphics card, we may do a push-pull in this 4000X case with the 360 all-in-one at the front. Now, with all that being said, let's go. So we've reached the first step, guys, in any part of any build, and that is clearing all of the stuff that's unwanted away from your desk, only having in front of you what you're actually going to need. In this instance, our CPU, our 32 gigs worth of DDR5, our 500 gigs worth of M.2, and then this Maximus Hero motherboard as well. So without further ado, go ahead, take out your motherboard, out of the motherboard box, place it on top of the motherboard, and I'll see you in a second. So there we have it guys, motherboard nicely on top of our motherboard box. We're not gonna damage the table, more importantly, not gonna damage the actual motherboard as well. We went inside the motherboard box to retrieve a SATA data cable, which we'll need for our 860 SSD, and then also our M.2 screw, and you can get that out of the motherboard box. Just better to get it out now, and then you're not got to actually go back in box at a later stage. So the first step that we'll move on to, guys, is our 12900K, and I'll show you how to install that now. So onto the CPU guys, and yes, this is the world's fastest gaming CPU out right now, until at least AMD come back in October with their 7000 series CPUs. But for now, this has got the crown for the world's fastest third CPU. So what we're gonna do guys, is we're just gonna open this one up, and there we go, it reveals our 12900K. And as I said guys, world's fastest uh, gaming CPU at the minute, and an absolute monster when it comes to video editing or content creation as well. It's got eight uh, performance calls, eight uh, economy calls if you like, so 16 calls in total, and uh, yeah, it's an absolute beast. So let's go ahead and install our CPU into our socket, guys. As we said previously, the socket type has changed from Intel to accommodate this new 12900K. So the first thing we wanna do is unrelease the retention arm, we can open up the socket itself, like that, like so. I'm not sure whether I'm a, a fan of this because when you're looking at this, the socket's actually right in front of you and you've got to kind of work around it. So do be mindful of that. And 
When you're taking out your 12900K, just make sure that you're holding it by the sides so that you don't get your fingers all over the bottom or anything like that. What we're looking to do here, guys, is there is a triangle on the actual CPU. And what we're looking to do is to match that with the triangle that's on the actual socket itself. Failing that, there is a couple of indents on the actual CPU and on the socket, there's a couple of uh, little things that you can match up there as well. So go ahead and line up that, drop it into place nicely. There we go. Then we can return the socket and then pull down the lever and ensure it's firmly in place. And then we've got our 12900K, all good to go. Next up guys, a little bit out of order is our 980 Pro. I normally like to do the, the RAM next, but we'll do uh, this 980 Pro. So this is a 500 gig NVMe drive, absolutely blazing fast guys. So all we've got to do is literally undo our heat shield. We're gonna put our NVMe drive on the top M.2 slot on this particular motherboard. All we're gonna do is take our NVMe and as you can see here, we've got these quick uh, release M.2s here as well. Place your M.2 or NVMe at a 20 degree angle, slightly push to one side, push down, and then we can turn this quick lock mechanism and that's our installation of this uh, 980 Pro done. All we've got to do then guys, is make sure that we peel off any tape on the bottom of these heat shields as well. And then we can place it back into position and tighten it back into place. So onto the RAM guys, and I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not the most sexiest RAM out there. We've got two sticks of 16 gigabytes, so 32 gigs in total. It's DDR5, it's 48 megatransfers per second. Uh, it's CL40, um, it's by Crucial, and it reminds me a little bit like DDR2, DDR3 without the heat shields on. So what we've actually done is we've gone out and bought this kit from Easy DIY. Effectively, it's just a cover that slides over the RAM module and allows you to be able to connect it via a five volt addressable header to your motherboard and basically adds a little bit more of an appealing aesthetic uh, to the actual module itself. Here's one that I've just done. Essentially, all it is is two screws here. The top slides off, you slide in the RAM module. You've got uh, a couple of, uh, should we say, I think it's like, um, one or two mil thick pieces of foam that you can slide in either side. You then put uh, the RAM module back together, tighten the two screws, and this is kind of what you're actually uh, looking for here. So it's got a, got a wire off at the top, but I'm sure um, if, we, if we can hide that somewhere or another, it's not gonna be the end of the world. All that's gonna happen then is that's gonna daisy chain to the second one that we're gonna do, and then essentially it's gonna go in a2 and B2, and we're just gonna attach it to a five volt addressable header. But I'm gonna be interested to see what the actual end result is like um, once these are actually turned on. Hopefully everything works fine. And there we have it guys. Really, really straightforward. Um, quite surprised how easy that actually is. And it's really nice aesthetic and touch for, should we say, RAM modules that don't have heat shields or spreaders that are on them and don't have any RGB support. So yes, we've got to contend with that little wire at the top, but we can hide that, daisy chain them together, attach them to the five volt addressable header, and then we can control this from the motherboard software as well. So hopefully let's get these installed, then we can get the motherboard installed into the case. So what we're wanting to do guys is A2 and B2. All we've got to do is line our RAM modules up till we get them into position, like so. And then we want firm pressure on either side till we hear a click. And again, firm pressure, there we go. So that's our RAM nicely installed. Now let's have a bit of a tidy up. We'll get the case up, have a quick look at that, and then we'll get the motherboard installed into the case. So there we have it guys, 4000X. I'm a huge fan of this 4000X. We've probably built 25 times in this particular case, white and black ones over the course of the last 12, 16 months, something like that. Um, full glass side panel, which is here. Three SP120 RGB fans at the front. It does come in an airflow version and a D version, as well as the X version. I prefer the X version uh, just because you get these RGB fans at the front and it's blacked out and it looks really, really nice if you deck it out in the RGB fans. 
full glass side panel, full PSU shroud. You've got filters which are magnetic all the way around. And in all honesty, guys, I personally think that this is one of the easiest cases because to be quite honest with you, Corsair make it so damn easy for first time builders and should we say the expert builders because all the grommets are in the right places, the cutouts are all in the right places. They've thought about where you can place the commander core or the, should we say, uh, the commander pros. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you can tell I really, really like this case. So this is going to turn out really, really nice. So without further ado, let's get the side panels off. Let's remove the filters, get it down to the bare bones, and then we'll install the motherboard inside. So as you can see now, guys, we've got our 3120 SP RGB uh, fans out of uh, the actual case. All we've done is disconnect them from our RGB hub as well. We can utilize this if we wish to do so. Um, personally, I think I'm going to remove it um, just because we've got the H150i Elite LCD. That actually utilizes uh, a USB 2 header as well as the Commander Core will use a USB 2 header as well. So we're not gonna actually utilize this at all so i think what i'm going to do is remove it out of the back of here and it will just remove a few extra cables also so just give you a quick rundown on the cables from the front of this particular case guys as well so we've got our standard hd audio which is that one there we've got our usb uh, c which is there we've got our usb 3.0 which is there and then we've got our standard reset button power switch hd lights etc etc so the great thing about this case also guys is all the standoffs are already pre-installed. On our motherboard, our IO shield is already installed because if it wasn't already installed, this is the point where you go ahead and install your IO shield right now. So we can lower in our motherboard into position. Just taking care and making sure it sits on the standoffs really nicely. So now our motherboard's on top of its standoffs, guys, not going anywhere. What we want to do now is go ahead and secure it into place using the correct screws which are these ones here. They've got a slight head on them, makes really good contact with the ground in pins and holds the motherboard firmly in place. An electric screwdriver does come in really handy for these smaller screws. I'm sure you saw me earlier. It did struggle when we were trying to take out the, the fan screws. Not really built for that, to be quite honest with you, but it does come in really handy in spots like this. So next up guys, we're gonna install this 360 mil cooler at the front as an intake cooling this 12900K. It is the H100i Elite LCD. Absolute stunning cooler guys. Performs fantastically well and looks even better. I have the H150 Elite Capital X without the screen. I'm a little bit, uh, should we say, jealous of this particular cooler. And I have installed a number of these 240 and 280 versions as well. So gonna be absolutely fantastic performance in terms of cooling this uh, 12900K, but also it's gonna add that extra aesthetic and that little bit of je ne sais quoi to this particular build as well. So let's go ahead, I'll show you how to install it. So included with this uh, 360 cooler guys, we actually do already have um, three of these ML120 fans as well. Really, really good RGB, really, really good performance in terms of uh, the actual static pressure that they create as well. So what we're doing here is we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to remove all of the components that we're going to require. And one of the main reasons why a lot of people are going with these Elite Capalexes and especially the LCD is because you get the Commander Core that comes with the actual um, all-in-one cooler itself. That alone is around about 40 pounds. So you can imagine it's very, very good value for money. One of the other things that uh, Corsair have thought about really cleverly is the fact that most USB uh, two headers on motherboards uh, it only comes with two. Now, when you're actually installing a Commander Core and you're installing, shall we say, this Elite LCD screen, that takes up two USB two headers. Now, if you do have any USB two uh, ports on the front of your uh, case as well, that's going to require one as well. So what they've done is they've come up with a splitter cable which allows you to put the Commander Core and the Elite LCD screen into one and only take one of those USB 2 headers on your motherboard, which is again, 
really good forward thinking. So as we're using the Intel 1700 guys, we want to get rid of the AM4, we want to get rid of the TR4 as well because we don't need any of that. What we need is the Intel 1700 and our Intel mounting bracket, which is there. Everything else we should be able to just get rid of, get it out of the way, give yourself a little bit more room to move. So the first thing we're gonna do then guys, now that we've got everything unpacked, just to make sure that we've got everything, we've got our three ML120 fans, we've got our LGA1700 mounting bracket, we've got all our hardware, we've got our commander call, we've got our pump, and we've got our radiator, okay? Now the plan is, because this is a 360 mil all-in-one cooler, this case only supports 280 or 240 at the top and 360 at the front. So the plan is to have our radiator at the front along with our three ML120 fans. In a push configuration, yes, it will push a little bit warm air into the case, but due to the fact that we've got three more of these ML120 at the top and at the rear, exhausting that warm air should be absolutely fine. It creates really good static pressure, and to be quite honest with you, drawing in fresh cool air, cooling this CPU is the better option in this. Now, if we were talking perfect scenarios, I would have personally gone with a 240 or 280 mil cooler, had it at the top of the case and had it as an exhaust, but that would have dealt with higher temperatures for the CPU. So I think personally it's a good compromise. Having this 360 mil cooler, especially at the front, means that we're gonna get adequate cooling for our 12900 and it doesn't compromise in terms of the aesthetics either. Hello, mister. Hello. Hello. Are you coming to build a computer with me? Yeah. Yeah? I come to build computers with daddy? Yeah. Yes. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Are you on camera? Uh-oh. Mama here. Quick, quick. Go get her. Say, say bye-bye, daddy. Okay, don't. So the first step we're gonna do guys in order to install this, we're gonna take our radiator. We want to ensure that we've still got our cover over our thermal paste so we don't get that all over the place. We wanna take our radiator and we wanna place it inside of our case, just taking care not to scratch anything. So now that we've pushed all our cables through to one side guys, we've got our radiator on the inside of the actual case. We have put our fans on top of the radiator and then pushed it towards the front of this grill here. What we've done is we've put one screw in just at the top, just to make sure the radiator doesn't come away. What we want to ensure is we've got our long screws with a little washer on. And then what we can do is we can just line up our fan like so. And we should be able to just push another one of these through and it should line up for our other screw hole. There we go, fantastic. Now I don't want to tighten these up until I've got all screws, uh, all 12 screws actually aligned. Therefore, meaning that I'm not gonna have any alignment issues or anything like that. But what we'll do is we'll move on to fan number two, fan number three, get a couple of screws in, and once they're in, we should have no problems whatsoever. So there we have it, guys. Three ML120 fans in a push configuration on this all-in-one Elite LCD 360 cooler. And there we have it inside. Absolutely fine, no problems whatsoever. And what you could do is, if you really, really wanted to, is you could place another couple of 120 fans at the top here and you could have a push pull if you really wanted to. Now, you couldn't do it for the bottom because you haven't got enough room with the cutout from the PSU shroud, but um, if you really, really wanted to, you could do a couple of uh, fans there. We may do that dependent on um, how much time we've got. Right then guys, let's just talk about our pump uh, here and the cables that come off of our pump as well. So. We've got a USB 2, uh, which needs to go down to our header on our motherboard. We've got our three pin, which needs to go onto our CPU fan header at the top of the motherboard. And then we've got this uh, 24 pin, which needs to go into the top of our commander core just up here, signified by this little gray mark there, and then a little gray mark at the top of this commander core. But we'll hook all that up a little bit later. The next priority for me is getting our Intel 1700 bracket at the back, getting our standoffs installed, and then we can get attached our cooler as well. So bear with me, we'll go ahead and do that now. 
So first thing we're going to do guys, LGA1700 back plate. All we've got to do is take it, push it at the back of our motherboard and push it through the holes. And then what we need to do then is whilst that's in place, we take the four standoffs and we screw them into the front of that particular uh, back plate as well. So now you push your back plate through guys, you've put your standoffs onto the actual back plate. Again, we've got one last one to do. It's the same both side guys, it makes no difference. So just ensure that when you're putting it on, you just turn it around, you don't cross thread it or anything like that and you just screw it on all the way until you've got a firm connection. Again, the same for all of those four. And once you've got that in place, we're good to go. So like most uh, all-in-one coolers guys, we can take away the cover and we can see that there is some pre-applied thermal paste as well. Our intentions here are to put these four holes around these four brackets and then secure it in place utilizing the thumb screws. But essentially what we want to do now is we want to clip back on our top of our cooler, which just clips on like that. And then what we can do is we can push all of the cables to the back of the actual case itself, with the exception of this one, which needs to be plugged onto the CPU header just up here. Once you've shoved all your cables through to the back, don't worry, don't get too hung up about all of these cables. The major thing is what it looks like at the front. Now, before we actually move on and start connecting our Commander Core and all of our other cables, it's important that we get the rest of our fans installed into our case. Therefore, we can configure how we're gonna route the cables and how it's actually going to be hooked up and what is going to be fan number one, two, three, etc. Because that's important when it comes down to uh, IQ later on uh, when we get into Windows. So the first thing I'm going to do is install the top two fans and then the rear exhaust fan as well. So therefore we've got all of our case fans all installed. And again, same thing as what we mentioned previously. We're utilizing the ML120 RGB fans. Fantastic uh, for case fans, going to be brilliant at exhausting uh, this warm air as well. And uh, not only that, it's going to be in keeping with the other fans that's on the all-in-one at the front as well. So really, really straightforward, guys. Just four screws ensuring that we've got our cables to the back side of the actual case so we can easily cable manage. Apart from that, it's really straightforward. I'll be back very shortly and we'll hook everything up to this commander core and ensure that everything's connected to the motherboard before we move on to the power supply. So there we have it guys. We've got our 360 all-in-one nicely installed at the front of this case. We've got our RAM there and our motherboard nicely secured in place as well. Not turning it around to have a look at all the cables just yet, but we've got our nice two uh, ML120s at the top and at the rear all in place now as well. So the next logical step guys, is to go ahead and install our commander core and start wiring up all of the cables at the back. Then we'll move on to the power supply. So first thing we're gonna do guys is we're gonna remove this hard drive bay here. We're then going to go ahead and install our commander core just around about here, making sure that it's facing downwards and that we can get our fan connections in this side as well. So somewhere around here, we're going to utilize the 3M tape piece at the top, piece at the bottom, just to secure it into place. So one bit up here and one bit up here. So once you've got your 3M tape on the back, guys, all we need to do is then center it, making sure that you've got sufficient room. That looks about right there. Perfect. Press down a few seconds and we are good to go. Absolutely fine. So the first connection we're going to make, guys, is from our all in one cooler and it's from our pump. So as you can see there, we've got our gray little box and at the top, we've got another gray little box up here. So now that we've got all our cables sorted guys, we need to understand what way and what orientation we want our fans to actually react in IQ. So personally, I really like number one being the front fan at the bottom. So that's one, two, three, four, five, ending with number six, which is the rear exhaust fan at the back, okay? So that's the way we're gonna do it. One, two, three at the front, four, five at the top, six at the rear. 
So it's very straightforward guys. All I've done is identified which one is the PWM cable and which one is the RGB cable. And what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to go ahead and connect all of our RGB connections to our commander core, starting with fan number one in the bottom left. So very straightforward, we're gonna go ahead, fan number one into connection number one. Then fan number two into connection number two. Fan number three into connection number three. There we go. And then up top to number four, which is number four. There we go. And then number five, which is number five. And then finally to the rear, which is this one here, which is number six. So there we go, we've got all of our fans RGB all hooked up. And yes, it doesn't look perfect at this moment in time, but we can work on the cable routing at a later stage. Now, the next thing to understand here, guys, is PWM is totally different. It's not the same as RGB. It doesn't need to be synced up in order. As long as it's got power, there's no issues whatsoever. So what we tend to do, though, I like to make sure this is uh, the same way, is I'll hook up the back one to number six, and then we'll work from the front. So this one's number five. At least I know then that the RGB is the same as the PWMs and everything should be working for absolutely fine. So number four goes in and then we go to the front. So it's number three. And then number two. and then number one. Now, a lot of people ask me, do you actually need a Commander Core or a Commander Pro in order to make this work? And the answer is no, you do not, okay? When you come uh, with a 4000X case, you get an RGB hub at the back, so all your six fans can connect into that. Now, the only difference would be with the Commander Pro or the Commander Core is the fact that it can power six fans at the same time, so it's one hub that can control all of your fans all in one nice, neat place. But if you only add the RGB hub, then you would need, shall we say, six headers or PWM headers on your motherboard in order for each one of these cables to connect into. Or if you didn't have six PWM headers, you could just get some PWM splitter cables and then just plug those into the motherboard, therefore negating the need for a Commander Core or a Commander Pro, but still having the ability to command uh, the RGB and the actual uh, PWM fans in IQ at a later step. So no, you don't need these guys, but it does make it a damn sight easier and a lot more, should we say, pleasing to look at because all of it is connected into one central place. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and install the SSD at the back down here. Now that SSD is a two terabyte, um, 860 Pro, which is from Samsung. So we'll go ahead and install that onto the back of this little SSD caddy here. So one thing to note then guys is you will require a SATA uh, data cable from your actual um, motherboard box. So make sure that you go ahead and get one of those. This 860 is uh, a really nice drive guys, especially being two terabytes. Um, primarily, we've got our operating system, which is on a 980 Pro, which is absolutely rapid, but uh, this is going to be really, really nice for uh, sizable games, storage, and library kind of items as well. So not bad, two terabytes worth of really fast storage as well, around 600 megabytes uh, as well. So not too bad at all. We want to make sure this is going up here like this, and this is on the back here. We want to make sure that our connections are coming out the bottom so that we're not going to have any issues when we're putting in the thumb screw or anything like that. So therefore, dead straightforward, we can just screw this in and then we can connect our data onto the bottom and power onto the bottom also. So four dead straightforward screws, guys. Again, best way to do it is just by putting uh, the opposite corner in. Again, this little uh, screwdriver comes in really, really handy. Saves the old wrists. 
there we go all sorted so as we said previously just ensuring that the orientation of the ssd is correct so that we can get our sata power and data cable on there no problems whatsoever secured by four screws on the inside and secured into place with the thumb screw so what we can do now is we can go ahead lie this back down and we can nicely just put that back into position and secure it utilizing the thumb screw just up there like that so the power supply of choice this week guys is none other than the Corsair's RM850X. Absolutely fantastic power supply, 80 plus gold rated guys, 10 year warranty, fully modular and a really nice design. So couldn't be happier with that. Really, really straightforward. All we're gonna do is gonna take it out. We're gonna shove it into the back. We're gonna secure it in place with four screws and I'm gonna walk you through how to connect everything on the front of the motherboard and make sure that everything's connected correctly. So I'm just plugging in our 24 pin there, guys. What we also got here is we've got um, our CPU, which is one of them is there. Now I'm gonna connect two of these eight pins, uh, essentially the EPS power cables for our CPU. So I'm gonna plug in two of these due to the fact that we have got two on this Maximus Hero board and it would be a shame to starve it of any power, especially with it uh, having this 12900K in as well. What we're also going to do is we've got two of these um, GPU cables. So we want to make sure that we've got them in there as well. And then the last uh, cable that we've got is our SATA power cable, which we're going to utilize for our commander core and our SSD as well. So that's all of our connections all done guys. As we said previously, all we've got to do is ensure that our fan is facing downwards and then we can slide this in, moving any cables just slightly out the way. And then just lining it up at the back and securing it in place, utilizing the four screws that came with the actual PSU itself. So what we're gonna do now guys, because we've got a whole plethora of cables here, from the front IO of our case to all of the power supply cables that we've just uh, put into the actual case is we're gonna start routing these and I'm gonna show you how to do it. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two PSU cables and we're gonna run them all the way up and push them through to the top of our case up here. So what we'll do now guys while we're here, SATA power cable, we can connect onto our Samsung SSD, that's that one. And then whilst we're also here, we can connect our commander core as well and then we know that that's also got power and then the excess of these cables can be pushed into the basement of this particular case as well we've got our 24 pin which we'll push through to the front of the case as well we've got all our front io which is just here and we need this to go through to the front of the case also so hd audio can go all the way under all of these and can go through to that one up there that's fine then we've got USBs, USBs, USBs. All of those can go through to the front of this case. Right, that just leaves us our two graphics card PCIe power cables and our SSD data cable. So now that we've reached this point, guys, we're gonna go ahead and connect everything to the front of our motherboard. It's at this point that we want to make sure that we take a time, we ensure that we're connecting all the cables correctly so we don't face any disappointment when we press that power button later on. So the first one I'm gonna actually connect is our USB 3. That's at the side just over here. Again, this is a little bit finicky, guys, so I would take your time, especially with this little uh, cable at the side here as well. But just line it up nicely and then push it together. That's all nice and connected. We've then got our USB Type-C connection, which is here. Again, this is really, really straightforward. It goes into our connection, which is just on the side just here. It does only go in one way, guys, so make sure that you don't force it or anything like that. Slot it nicely into position, and that's our USB-C and USB-3 nicely connected. The next one we want to do, guys, is our 24-pin. It's the most beefy one that we have, so we want to ensure that it's actually orientated in a way that we can actually connect it. Once we've got it down, push it down and you should hear a nice click. There we go. And then what we can do is we can push the excess through to the back of the case. 
what we have got is our SATA data cable for our SSD. So we want to ensure that we've connected that onto our SSD um, connections, which are here. There we go, that's nicely connected. We've then got our HD audio cable, which always goes down here in the bottom left-hand corner. So as we said previously, guys, we've got a couple of USB 2 cables that we need to plug in. Now on this motherboard, we have actually got two USB 2 headers, but the H150i Elite LCD comes with a splitter cable. So what we're gonna actually do is utilize this splitter cable, free up one of those USB 2 headers, because I believe we're gonna actually need it for the RGB hub at the back, because we want to actually connect two more fans on the back of this uh, 360 all-in-one, just to do a little bit of push-pull and to add a little bit more RGB, or at least look what it looks like. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and connect these up. There's one. And then our other one, there we go. And then all we've got to do is look at the pin out here, which is a blank in the top left-hand corner. And essentially that can go straight onto the USB 2 header down here, just like that. So push that into position and then we can push the excess through to the bottom of the case. And then what we'll do is we'll walk you through the HDD, the LEDs, the power switch and the reset switch. And that goes just on the end up here. So last ones left guys are our reset switch, power switch, power LED, positive and negative. Really, really straightforward. And I would always advise, pull out your actual motherboard manual and look out uh, the actual pin layout for these actual connections, because these are the ones which could be an absolute nightmare when you press that button and nothing happens whatsoever. Now, the easiest way for me to explain it to you is that it's the power switch, which is at the top, then the reset switch, which is just underneath it. And then you've got the power LED buttons to the left of the actual power switch itself. Now, I will get a close up as much as I can for you just to show you, but I would advise again, please consult your motherboard manual just to ensure you get this correct. So we've got a diagram which is here. It shows us that our hard drive light and LED light reset button is on the bottom. So we've got our power switch, which is at the top, which is up here. And then we've got our reset switch, which is just below it. If I can do it, there we go. And then we've got our power LED buttons to the left of our power switch. It's normally the negative first and then the positive. So our negative one first, which is there, and then our positive one, which is just next to it. There we go, all connected. Again, we can then push that excess through to the back of the case and we can make sure that we can cable manage that. What we're gonna do now, guys, is we're gonna turn the case over. I'm not gonna bore you with this part. I'm gonna cable tidy all the back of it. I'm gonna make sure all the actual uh, cables are tied down using zip ties and cable tidiers, if you like, and ensure that the customer is gonna be really, really happy with the state of not only the front, but the back as well. So we made a couple of changes, guys. What we wanted to do was add a couple more RGB fans onto the back of this radiator, acting as a push-pull configuration as well. Now we can't get the third one due to the uh, shroud, the PSU shroud at the bottom down here, but it will highlight some of this darker area. And seeing as we've got the RGB hub, I've installed it back uh, into the back of this particular case. So we've put the RGB hub back in place, connected it to USB 2, and especially having that, uh, should we say that extension cable, which managed to get the, the commander core and the elite screen all daisy chained together means that we had the extra USB 2 connection as well. So we've put this back in and all we're gonna do is we're gonna add two more fans in a pull configuration on the back of that 360 rad. We're gonna hook both of the RGB uh, to number one and number two up here. And then we're gonna use a, um, PWM splitter cable so that I've got only one cable running all the way up to the top of the motherboard. So bear with me, I'll be back in a second. So last but not least guys, the icing on the cake, it's the RTX 3070. Absolutely fantastic bang for buck guys, this particular card, great performance, 1080p, mo loads and loads of FPS, 1440p, loads and loads of FPS, and still very, very capable 
at around 60 to 80 FPS in 4K as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbox this, we're gonna get our graphics card installed, and then we'll give you the final reveal. So bear with me. And then we have our 3070, which is just here. It doesn't wanna come out. There we go. So as we said, guys, absolutely brand spanky new. Really, really nice, lovely card, guys, this. Really nice card. As we can see here, for power, it's got two eight pins. Really nice back plate on this. Um, I'm a big fan of these X trios. There we go, guys. We've just removed our two panels at the back. Let's just do a quick check to ensure that everything's going to line up. Remove our PCIe cover. Uh-oh. We'll go ahead and install the extension. I tell you, if it's not one thing, it's another. I've managed to sort it, guys. So we've managed to put this uh, PCIe extension cable on, guys. We had to, I had to have a little bit of help because nothing was lining up, really. Um, so I needed someone to push that way, someone to push that way, and me to screw the cables or the screws in. So we've managed to sort it now. So we've managed to get... Dun, dun, dun into this stage here. And I will say guys, it looks bloody brilliant. Now, my only one concern is having this orientated this way, it is fairly close to this, well, not fairly close, it is very, very close to this uh, glass side panel. So we do need to keep an eye on the temperatures here. So even though it looks really good, I do think there'll be some give or take here with regards to um, the temperatures. But with that being said, we could, if we really wanted to, remove these two fans here and we could place it back in the original orientation and we wouldn't have any issues. But I do think that this adds an extra aesthetic to it. Now, what we need to do, last thing, is we need to add our two 8-pin PCIe cables, which is at the back up here. We'll get that done and then I'll be back with you very, very shortly. We'll be ready to press the power button, pray to the PC gods that everything turns on back in a second. There we go. New Perfect. We've had a few changes, guys. There's been a few things that didn't go quite to plan. That was some things which are out of our control that we didn't actually anticipate. So I just want to walk you through it because in all honesty, here we are. So I normally like um, actually walking you through these things and letting you guys understand where the issues are and where we encountered the problems as well. So this is where we currently are quite different to where you've just seen a couple of magic moments away where we were vertically mounted and everything was absolutely fine. So the problem was we were using um, a Gen 3 riser cable with a Gen 4 graphics card on this 12th Gen platform and it just did not like it at all. And I mean 12 different error codes rebooted 20 different times and every single time there was a different error code. Um, I thought it was the RAM, it wasn't RAM. I cleared the CMOS, it went the CMOS. We tried the graphics card and finally I changed the riser cable just to obviously default here. And well, we know it, it actually worked perfect, no problems whatsoever. So I did go into the BIOS, I did try and change the PCIe lane to Gen 3, but it still didn't have anything to do with it. It wanted to automate back to auto, and as soon as it did that, it just come up with an error, 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 and loads more errors. So if you are looking at a Gen 4 graphics card, utilizing that on a Gen 3 riser cable, especially on this 12th Gen Intel system, prepared for issues because it was a bloody nightmare. So we've chucked the old rule book out and we got rid of the fan uh, that was on uh, this 360 cooler here at the front because unfortunately we can't fit it with uh, the graphics card in this orientation. We've gone back to obviously our traditional 
um, mounting of the graphics card rather than the other way that we had it previously. But I'm not disappointed, guys. In all honesty, from my perspective, I think it looks truly fantastic. Would it have been nice to have a, a couple of more fans on the front there and push pull? Absolutely. But what I've done in the background, um, because we had so many issues, I've managed to load Windows onto this. We've gone with Windows 10, not Windows 11, just for the stability. Even though this is DDR5, I don't think it's worth going up to uh, Windows 11 at this moment in time. It is Windows 10 Pro, and what the customer can actually do is upgrade to Windows 11 as and when he wishes to do so as well. So, with that in mind, guys, this 12900K on this Maximus Hero Z690 motherboard, 32 gigs worth of DDR5 at 4800 at CL40, RTX 3070 and this Elite 150i LCD cooler in none other than the 4000X case. I'm hoping that uh, you guys have learned something from this. Um, it never seems to go as smooth as what I anticipate. And uh, the customers drove all the way up from London to be with me today and it's still 11 o'clock at night. So we've managed to get it done. Windows updates, drivers, you name it. Fortnite downloaded for his son. Everything is just plug, play, and no problems whatsoever. So just an FYI, we're gonna turn it on just to make sure everything works and to give everyone peace of mind that it is still working. So power on. And some power, thank God. Hey, there we go. We've got some RGB on the go. There we go. A bit of a front view. And I'll turn it around in a second as well. There we go. So no keyboard detected, but essentially everything should be absolutely fine. 12900K, 980 Pro. It detected everything in there, guys, which is absolutely fantastic. And there we go. We're directly straight into Windows. So that's absolutely fantastic for me. As you can see, these old ugly kind of style uh, ram sticks we're from them easy diy kit we've managed to put on really really cool attached it to the, this hero motherboard via the five bolt addressable header and that's being controlled by the motherboard as well so that's all good no problem there all the rgb's now working it needed an update through iq and as soon as that did that everything started working airflow seems to be really really good this 12900K has not exceeded 32, 33 degrees either. So all in all, it's been a really, really nice build and I couldn't be happier that I'm handing it off to a customer and his little lad's gonna thoroughly enjoy it, whether that's for a bit of content creation, but mainly gaming. So David, I hope you enjoy the system, my friend. Very nice to meet you today. And uh, Danny, thank you very much for your time, your persistence and also your patience as well. And I wish you all the very best. Guys, links for everything down in the description below. If you've not done already, smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Take care.